Hey, it's Rob Rush. As you can see, I have Orlando and joining Orlando and I is a gentleman that uh, you are certainly familiar with, uh, whether it's from Stone Sour, whether it's from Slipknot, whether it's from his solo career or anything else that he's done. Mr. Corey Taylor is joining us this afternoon. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. You know, let's let's not forget my tasteful nudes, too. You know, I mean, it's very important <laughs> that we push those because, I mean, I like nobody's buying them. So I really need to get as many out the door as possible. Well, so. we'll give the uh, the link for your OnlyFans uh, after the interview comes <laughs> up and stuff like that. So, you know, that's all yeah, good. But it's um, only but it's all it's only it's only fan. There's only one person. Oh, only know, fan. So it's like, yeah, there's no You've got a lot of money, on. brother. You'll do all right. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's me. So I. <laughs> um you uh were actually we were talking before we started recording you were hanging out with us in the paramount where you're actually going to be a uh, part of the cmft2 tour uh september 16th you're going to be there and we were hanging out that day you were doing an event unfortunately the bookstore that you were doing is not there anymore but uh, you were wow. gracious enough to come hang out with us and uh where there was the wedding proposal you taught orlando how to play guitar uh songs using three chords and uh so we have a little history and uh you know now yeah. you have a second solo album out. Uh, let's talk about that, man. Uh, CMFT, by the way, was a great album. And I have a couple of questions I want to ask you about some song selections that you did with that one. But uh, okay, Beyond is the new single. So let's talk about the new album coming out. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, we, uh, you know, we started, I started working on, on the music for this almost immediately because we, uh, you know me, I mean, I'm a maniac. So I've only got like a million songs going on. And uh what really triggered the direction for this album was when we, we actually were able to go out and tour on CMFT, man. Like we, we started putting the set list together and we realized that like so much of this stuff was, you really worked together, whether it was Slipknot stuff or Stone Sour stuff or, you know, the covers that we've chose, or, mm. you know, we just, we realized it's like, man, we got a hell of an opportunity here to do something really special, you know? So when it came time to kind of start working on, the writing for this album i lent i really leaned into everything like that you know i was just like well you know what i'm going to incorporate more of the heavy stuff like slipknot more of the the stuff that kind of has that stone sour vibe you know really do some more of the like the acoustic stuff that you know people really asked for um uh, you know over the years so i really kind of you know tried to go to those places that people were missing you know it's like not that they didn't dig cmft but with this mm -hmm. That was more of like where I was coming from. And yeah. this album is really more where I'm going from a solo standpoint, you know, I'm really trying to make sure that I'm able to kind of hit all of those musical identities that I have and explore other ones, you know, like, you know, doing stuff like the piano songs and and really trying to to find cool ways to keep, you know, keep things fresh, you know, and and it really just it kind of took off, man. We're hanging out with Corey Taylor on 94.3 The Shark, Everything That Rocks. Corey, beyond the new single sounds great on the air. And as somebody that's now a veteran of the music business for representing so many different genres, are you mindful anymore of what type of song it's going to sound like when you start writing it? And do you know in advance this is going to be a solo song? This is going to be a Stone Sour song? Oh, that's a good question, man. I mean, I used to, to be honest, you know, when I was, especially when I was writing stuff, I definitely had an ear for, okay, this is definitely going to be Stone Sour. This is going to be Slipknot. Um, but now I have to be careful because I'm, you and me, I'm greedy, you know? So I'm like, you know, if I write something really rad and I go, hmm, where's this going to go? You know, and I'm like, if it's really good, I'm like, well, maybe I just won't tell anybody that I wrote this. You know, <laughs> just stick it over here in this pocket. But, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, you know, I don't know. I mean, the, I, the it's a really good problem to have, dude. You know, like I, I've instead of not enough, you know, outlets for it, I have too many. So I just kind of kind of like dial in where I'm going to put it and, and how it's going to sound. And, uh, and honestly, and this is the kicker, it all comes down to who's going to play on it, man. Like I know when I write something, if I have a certain idea of how it's going to be augmented musically with like mick and jim and everybody in slipknot i'll be like okay i i think they could definitely do something really cool with this or as opposed to the stuff that i do with the solo thing when i know that zach and tooch will lend itself something musically that is really special as well you know so it really kind of comes down to my instincts 
on how those guys are going to be able to to make those songs really come into themselves. You know, Bo uh, Beyond is a perfect example. That song really was very bare bones. And it's a song I've had for, you know, I've had the structure for a long time, but I'd never really been able to to kind of dial it in. And I I really kind of started from scratch with it. And as I was kind of rebuilding it, I realized I was like, you know what, this is going to be really, really cool with with Zach and Tooch on it. And man, they ran with it. It sounds so good. It's really, really cool. And when is uh, the album going to be coming out? Uh, do you have a date for it yet? September 15th is when September. it drops. So, right, yeah, so right. I mean, right in the middle of the tour, which is great. You know, so yeah. I'll be able to we'll be uh, we'll be playing a lot of stuff on the tour, uh, you know, off of the album um and just you know showing people uh you know really the scope of everything and you know, how how you know how big it's going to sound and then the 16th you're actually going to be at the paramount that night so it'll be cool right. that the album will be out the day before you hear on long island and this is going to be if i'm not mistaken your first time solo playing anywhere on long island i mean i know you've done stuff i think so time. yeah yeah you man know? um yeah we we uh yeah, on the first album, obviously because it was the pandemic and whatnot, there was only so much that we could do in certain places. Yeah. Um, so when you know the time came to really kind of start putting the, the tour together for this album, man, we were like, oh, dude, now the world's our oyster. We're but that was to, interesting because you were one yeah. of the first musicians to come out during the pandemic, yeah. actually during the pandemic, and play that live uh, stream thing. But what was that like? Was it weird? Like, what was the mindset for you at that point to be like, where the hell are we going to be in like another couple of months? Right. right. It, well, I tell you what, man, the, it, once you got past the, the excitement of getting out there to play for everybody, yeah, it was, it was a little nerve wracking, man. Like it was just like, Oh God, because first of all, I mean, you know, you knew that certain people were going to want to come, but then like, you know, once everything opened up, was anybody going to come back? You know, oh, yeah, so sure, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was tense, man. But I, you know, the thing that we found out was that by doing it the way we did, which was like a pod system, you know, and really doing it in a way where you know people would come in with their own groups and they would you know kind of stick to themselves, and then you know obviously that we were doing you know temp checks at the doors, we were doing yeah. everything that we could to make sure. The, not only the safety for everybody else, but the safety for us. Sure. It was, you know, that first tour came with no hitches, man. I mean, it was, it was great. The second time we did it, that's when things got a little lax because we, we were like, ah, oh, we can do this. It's fine, man. You know? And then obviously that last show in Denver, the next day I popped positive and I was <laughs> sick as a dog, dude. I mean, the yeah. sickest I've been, the sickest I've been since I was a kid. It was that bad. Like it was wow. brutal. Um, but obviously it was fine. I get, came through the on the side, and I was like, you know what? Lesson learned. You got to yeah. we, you know, or at least for now, we've got to really kind of pay attention to it, you know, and and really make sure that people are protecting not only themselves but each other. We're talking to Corey Taylor on ninety four three The Shark. Everything that rocks. His first time at the Paramount since twenty seventeen when he just hung out for a quick interview. Corey, when you have new music, especially since it's going to be introduced the day before your show, how does that affect your set list? How does a new album affect what songs fans are going to hear live? Um, you know, it's always good sometimes uh, when you're introducing new stuff to A, find a way to, to make it fun for everybody. Like there's a song on the uh, the new album called We Are the Rest, which has uh, uh, a great bit with uh, kind of back and forth with uh, the audience. It's it's got a great uh, kind of crowd chant that goes with it. So what you do is you kind of set that up before you like kind of you use that as the intro. You know, it's like okay, well, what I want you to do is I want you to repeat after me. You do this, and then when I point at you, you do that. And then you make it go back and forth and then it gets them involved, man. You know, so then then that, that honestly makes them remember that song. It's like, oh, what was that song that you know we were all singing together on? And he got us to do that, you know. So it kind of it makes sure that they go, oh, I gotta find that on the album when it comes out. And then another way to do it is to open with it, you know, which is which is, you know, I mean, that's an old hand, you know, old trick that you're going back in the day. It's like 
you really want people to get into the new album when you open with it and you open with like the exciting bit, you know, and you come out just screaming with a with a with a with a gut buster that just gets everybody stoked. So it's a great way to kind of to make sure that you tie people's memory to it, and, you know, especially if they go out and they buy it after seeing you play, then they can know it's like, oh, that's the song they open with. Oh, OK, yeah. right on. And then they come back and you know listen to it more and more. But it's, you know, it's a great way to get people involved because then it makes them feel like they're building it with you, you know, like they're helping to spread the word, the music, you know, like they feel like it's like we were there for the catalyst. I, mean, I remember seeing them when they were in New Jersey, you know, 23rd, Long Island. And, you know, it's, they, they talk about it and then they, they take it and, and, and it just becomes something that it's like almost like a groundswell. Now, I was fumbling back over there before, not because I wasn't paying attention, but I wanted to show you this. And this is one of the questions I was going to ask you regarding CMFT when you did the live. So I don't know if you can tell the picture. So this guy right here is an actor by the name of Michael Pere. He was in a movie called Eddie. And the oh, Pooh. yeah. yeah. Now, one of the Eddie songs that you did, and I think only Orlando and I would be like, how the hell did he decide to choose on the dark side to do a song that, you know, I thought was only popular on the East Coast. And here you are doing it. And you kind of brought it back to life a little bit. You included a, a medley as well. Melancamp was in there. Something else you put in there. It's <laughs> fucking awesome, dude. Thank you, man. Thank you. Listen, that song, that's been one of my favorite songs since I was a kid, to be honest. You know? 40 years I mean, this I, year, by the way. 83 it came out. That's crazy, right? No, I mean, yeah. it's and I remember seeing it on cable. You know, like, cause it would yeah. be on like on HBO, HBO. And Cinemax and stuff. Exactly, man. So I would watch that when I was younger. And I just remember that song, just that, that melody just getting caught in my head, you know? Yeah. And I just remember going, you know, it's, and, and it was honestly, it was an idea that two had because we were talking about, uh, you know, recording some, some, uh, some covers mm -hmm. to, to have it for like B-side stuff. And he goes, what if we did on the dark side? And I was like, I, he, it wasn't even out of his mouth. And I went, yes, we are 100% <laughs> doing that because I love that song. And then coming up with the medley in the middle, that actually happened in my kitchen. It was me, Zach, I think Tooch was there. And I think Jason, our old bass player was there, man. And we were kind of throwing ideas out because it's such a, a familiar uh, chord progression mm -hmm. that we just started we just started singing over the top of that chord progression and we did rock in the usa we did uh what i like about you by the yep. romantics we uh zach was actually the one that started singing cherry by uh neil diamond by uh by neil diamond yeah and then out of nowhere and you can't really hear it on the recording but when we're doing rock in the usa it actually morphs into a, a, a kind of an obscure kiss song, "Rocking in the USA," uh, which wow. is on, on that's on a live on too, right? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. and it's uh, yeah, it's on a live too. It's like mm -hmm. towards the end, all those uh, the originals that they did, yeah. and it, we just we played around with that so much because we just had so much fun just being loose and 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 just messing with it like that. That we were like, this would be rad if we actually recorded it so when we did it we broke it down and left this giant chunk in the middle so we could kind of build it that way and we just let it all play out but being able to pull it off live we were just losing our minds it was like oh my god i can't believe we're doing this this is great you know yeah it came out awesome so you know kudos man we're talking, <laughs> to, we're talking to Corey taylor on 94.3 the shark everything that rocks you know Corey. We've been playing beyond. It's getting a great response. The process that you just described in your kitchen was the same process you demonstrated for us in the studio with, I think you did the Joker by Steve Miller, White Snake, Here I Go Again. And oh, Afro that's Man, right. I got high. Afro Man, I got high. Yeah, that was yeah. a good one. All with that's the same right. words. Do you ever run into that problem when you're doing your own songs going, wait a second, I think we're, I think we're ripping off someone else? cryptonesia is it's a very real thing we just saw it play out shoot? in the in the courts with the with the what it's sheeran, uh, right? it's sheeran yeah yeah but the thing that we have the thing that that i love that he proved is that the chord progressions are going to be similar 
going all the way back, going all the way forward. It's what you do over the top of them. And that's one of the reasons why, and a lot of people won't know this, music cannot be copywritten. You know, now lyrics and melodies can, because that is the, the stuff that truly changes and shapes, which is one of the reasons why if you can show that the melody and the phrasing is the same, then you have copyright infringement. But if the music feels similar, there's nothing you can really do about it because those chord progressions have been the same for years, you know, going all the way back. So some, I, you know, I, I have a very, very long memory when it comes to that stuff. So I make sure I, I, I obviously, I try to avoid anything that sounds similar anyway, you know, cause I don't, I, that stuff doesn't interest me. So I really go above and beyond to, to really try and make sure that everything I do, it, you know, it sounds different, feels different. And if it is, if it does start to sound a little too similar, I rein it in and I, I break it down and restructure it from scratch. Like I've started whole other songs before and just gone right back to the drawing board. Cause I'm like, I don't want anyone to come in and say that, you know, I stole this, I stole that. And cause I've gotten in arguments with people before who have tried to tell me that I've done it. And I'm like, you're an idiot. Well, like, listen, these, these let's, I'm going to put these two songs right together. You show me on the doll where these songs are the same. And, and if not, you kiss my ass, man. And it's, it's very, uh, it's very satisfying. Well, we uh, know that uh, you're running out of time. We got other things to do. I want to thank you for your time. And uh, I guess the last question would be, uh, you know, what is your favorite thing about coming to this area of the country, the Long Island, New York area? Dude, it's the passion, man. You know, like it's it. I mean, and I've and I've felt like this since I'm 25, you know, like coming up there for the first time, really with Slipknot mm -hmm. and uh, just seeing the reaction of you know all the fans especially on the east coast man i mean there's just a certain passion that you just don't find anywhere else in the country that i have always loved uh it's one of the reasons why i i look forward to all the shows there uh when when they love you they love you when they don't oh you know about it you know <laughs> yeah. and thankfully i've got a pretty decent percentage of people who love it so yeah, man. And that, and that when we feel that and when we see that, it just makes me go so much harder and just try. I just try to go above and beyond for that. And I just I, I just appreciate the fans there so much that I, I don't think I'll ever be able to show it. Well, again, thank you. September 15th, CMFT2 is out. And uh, September 16th, you can see Corey at the Paramount. We'll be giving away tickets and uh, go to ParamountNY.com to buy your tickets.